As the story goes, when William Pete named Wolf as the commander for attacking Quebec, the Duke of Newfoundland was furious. He called Wolf a strange officer with rigid behavior. He was tall, lanky, he wouldn't wear a wig, and he had never led an army before. The Duke went on to call Wolf mad. The King replied, mad is he? Then I hope he'll bite some of my other generals and make them mad too. Major General James Wolfe was an unorthodox leader in the British Army. One example is that during the Siege of Quebec, if a soldier had any issues in his firing drills, he would not be punished by a whip. Instead, he would be dressed up in female attire and parade around the camp. Major General James Wolfe was born January 2nd, 1727 into a military family. From a young age, Wolfe had a frail constitution, always getting sick. His skill and courage showed in battle, and he kept being promoted all the way up to Major after the Jacobite Rebellion. He and his troops were put on garrison duty in Stirling, Scotland. When he was first transferred, he imposed strict standards of cleanliness. To fight the unrest in the region, he commanded his troops to avoid any disputes with the citizens, and commanded his officers to set up events for the civilians. While other regiments were oppressing the Highlanders, Wolf set his troops to build roads and help the population. Wolf took a six month leave to improve his skills as an officer, learning battle tactics from the Prussians, learning French and Latin, and other skills that would help him pacify any civilian population. Wolf continued his career in the Seven Years' War, personally leading a daring attack on the beaches during the Siege of Louisbourg. This helped him get promoted to Major General, and he would lead the attack on Quebec. Wolf was in command of the 15th, 28th, 35th, 43rd, 47th, 48th, 58th, and most importantly for him, the 78th Highlanders. Wolf also commanded 300 Louisbourg Grenadiers, Light Infantry, and Royal Artillery. He had only 7,000 of the 12,000 promised troops, but using his expert artillerymen, Wolf started off his attack on Quebec with fire mortars and burned much of the city. He had a lot of problems after that, the morale was low, much of the food was spoiled from the heat, and the heavy summer rains soaked the men constantly. He sent the American rangers up north and south of the city to burn the extra areas. Although the total war was taking out the food source for Quebec, Wolf had left no shelter for his own troops. His troops were subject to the heavy rains, and that led to a sickness running rampage through his camps. Although the siege was going well, Montcalm was holding out. Wolf would have to make a move. Wolf's goal was to sneak up from Quebec and scale 50 meter cliffs, then move and draw out Montcalm. He told a few officers of the attack to limit any information from spies or deserters. He used a fan with all the navy attacking southwards. This worked out great as Montcalm sent both his grenadiers and what little artillery he had to stop this. Wolf was tactically a genius. He sent his 78th Highlanders to assault the cliffs first because they are used to the rough terrain. In the 78th, some of the men spoke French so they would be able to get past the picket guard that the French had. These troops also had a higher morale than other troops because Wolf had respected them so much when he was in Scotland. After capturing the area around the cliffs, Wolf moved to the Plains of Abraham and set up his troops. He had already lost a third of his troops to sickness, so he only had about 4,500 troops on the plains. Wolf set up his troops in two ranks instead of three to stretch from one end of the plain to the other. The 48th was the only regiment in reserves in case of flanking from the natives or militia. Wolf decided not to do a two-ranked volley fire. Instead, the two ranks would fire at the same time only 40 yards away from the enemy. This would lead to a devastating volley shock on the French troops. John Knox wrote in his report that Wolfe had the troops charge their muskets with two balls instead of one to even create more of a shock. During the battle, Montcalm did not wait for his reinforcements, believing that Wolfe was bringing more artillery up the cliff. During the battle, Wolfe would be hit twice before he even commanded his army to shoot. And then he got shot in the chest and that would prove to be fatal. His style of leadership was bold and of new tactics. His goal was to take Quebec, and his personal goal seemed that he wanted to die in honor of battle than die of sickness. In these goals, Wolf accomplished both. Not only did he do everything right, 
His troops took minimum casualties that day, and the morale crush would cause the rest of Quebec's troops to surrender a few days later. While in the 18th century, Wolf was painted as a hero, he would eventually be reduced by historians to be bloodthirsty and very lucky in his victory against Montcalm. One such historian was French-Canadian historian Cassegrain. He published his book in 1905, arguing that Wolfe was bloodthirsty and brought terror to Canada with his total war. He goes on in his book to list how Wolfe was very lucky, how the sentry had forgotten his post that day, how the officer that patrolled the coast at that time was on a lame horse so he was not at the right position, how the guard on the cliffs was replaced four days earlier by one of the worst French captains. His list seemed to go on and on. Fast forward another hundred years, and historians' minds have started to change. Roch Carey published a book over Wolf in 2014 that argued while Wolf was a military genius and thinker, and his ideas helped conquer Canada, Wolf was still extremely lucky in both battles. Carey admitted Wolf was not bloodthirsty, and goes great lengths into his early life to show how well Wolf had treated the population before. Meanwhile, the most recent biography on Wolfe was written by Brumwell. Brumwell argues against many of the popular theories about Wolfe, like he was mortally sick and that he expected to die in battle. Brumwell goes into great length to describe how Wolfe had to deal with extra hardships and how Wolfe still succeeded after that. Some of his points that he argues is that Wolfe was an inexperienced commander and the evidence being that he didn't take the high ground on the Plains of Abraham. Brumwell argues that Wolf purposely chose to give the high ground to Montcalm. By giving up the high ground and making his army into a thin red line, Montcalm was more willing to fight without reinforcements. More importantly, Wolf knew that Montcalm would not be able to use his artillery from the city. Wolf was an amazing commander that didn't follow the status quo. I don't believe that he was just lucky, but I believe all his life was leading toward the Siege of Quebec with all his skills and all his knowledge. Wolf knew very well what he was doing, and while he took some risks, they were calculated risks and they paid off. He was a very successful general, and I believe if he had survived, that he would have succeeded in the Revolutionary War where both Cornwallis and Howe failed. Thank you for watching my video essay. This video was made for Military History 4393 at Baylor University.